everyone, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for, for a blessed Sabbath. Save us, help us, heal us, and protect us. Save all our families and our friends. In Jesus' name I pray. Good morning everyone and a happy Sabbath to you.
Good morning boys and girls and happy Sabbath. The lesson today is called Helping Hands. The memory verse is taken from Proverbs 14 and it's verse 21. Being kind to the needy brings happiness. The message from today's lesson is being kind to others makes us happy too. Have you ever done something really nice for someone? How did you make them feel? How did you feel? Dorcas did many kind deeds for others and God cared for her in an amazing way. Hello young friend, my name is Tabitha, that's my Aramaic name. But some people call me Dorcas, my Greek name. Since I learned about Jesus and became a Christian, I really want to help people like he did. When someone is sick, I go to see them. I usually take some food and maybe a warm blanket. If their house needs cleaning, I will do that too. I always pray with them and sometimes sing them a happy song about Jesus. Poor people need my help too. The widows especially. They are the ones without husbands to help them. I love sewing new clothes for them. I especially love children. The ones who are sick and don't have parents are the ones I take more time with. I give them a hug and listen to them talk about their problems. Sometimes I teach them a song or tell them a story about Jesus. Now I know why Jesus was so busy helping people. When you really look, you will always find someone who needs help. I like bringing happiness to others. By doing so, I get a lot of happiness too. Some time ago, something wonderful happened to me, but it did not start out wonderful. I was very sick. I was told that I was so sick that I died. My friends were very sad. Our friend Peter just happened to be in a nearby town. Someone sent for him and he came quickly. My friends were crying. They showed him the clothes I had made for them. They told him how I had helped them. That was very nice. But I would have been embarrassed if I had heard them. I am told that Peter prayed for me. I don't remember that. I just remember suddenly seeing Peter standing beside me. I was so surprised that I sat up. He took me by the hand and led me into the next room where many people were crying. Everyone looked up in shock. Then they shouted for joy. I really didn't realize what had happened, but God has used Peter to perform a miracle that brought me back to life. Word about that miracle spread really quickly, and many people believe in Jesus just because of it. I'm so happy that God used Peter to bring me back to life. I still have a lot of work to do. I want to continue to bring joy and happiness to others. I'm thankful that God has given me more time to serve Him. Hello boys and girls. Welcome to the final lesson for October 2021. I hope that you had lots of fun and that you learned a lot through the stories we read throughout this past month. We were introduced to Joshua. We met him in Giants and Grasshoppers. He was one of the spies that brought back a good report. Then Joshua himself sent two spies to Jericho and they were saved by the help of Rahab. Joshua then led the Israelites to cross the Jordan River on dry ground. And finally, Joshua was the one that led the Israelites into silent battle and they were able to defeat Jericho. Boys and girls, these stories show us just how many amazing ways God performs wonders on our behalf. We can always depend on Him. Do you know that He is also concerned about you and I? Yes, he cares so much that he sent his son from heaven to come to it, to die for you and me, just so that he can save us. Do you also know that during his time here, 
Jesus got lost? Yes. And his earthly parents searched for him frantically until at last they found him. Can you imagine how much relief they felt? I can just imagine the emotions that they felt at that time would have been very similar to the ones felt by the shepherd in this story coming up. This shepherd is actually a representation of Jesus and he desires that all of us, his sheep, be saved and be safe. Good morning boys and girls and welcome to our PowerPoint presentation for today. Do you know that humans forget things as time goes by? Yes. No matter how bad or how good an experience, if we don't do things to remember the event, we will forget it. How many of us can remember what happened to us on our first Um, Maybe a few of us can remember because our parents talk about it from time to time. But will you remember in 30 years time? Well, that's what happened to the children of Israel in King Hezekiah's time. They forgot about the wonderful things that God had done for them in the past. How he took them out of slavery. How he passed them through the Red Sea. How he brought them to the land that he promised them. Then how he had them to overcome the enemy. How he made them into a great and a powerful nation. God did all of this for them. And then they forgot God. It was so bad, or it got so bad, that one day the priest just closed the door to the temple, locked it, and never came back. Can you imagine not being able to go to church because the pastor and the brothers and sisters in the church forgot God and the church doors were locked? Oh, well. Maybe you can a little bit because COVID has caused our church doors to be shut too. But we still have the internet and we can still go to church on Sabbath even though it's virtual or by a computer. Anyway, when King Hezekiah ascended this world, one of the first things he set out to do was to remind people about God. He decided to reopen the church. So he called the priests together and he told them his plan. The priests first consecrated themselves. Then they set about the task of cleaning and consecrating the church. It took more than two weeks to do this. But it was so beautiful when it was finished. And they felt so good that King Hezekiah decided to invite everyone to celebrate Passover in the temple. You know, God had told Israel to hold Passover once a year so that they would not forget how he brought them out of sleep. Anyway, King Hezekiah sent WhatsApp messages and emailed invitations to everyone he thought should know about the God of the Jews. In those days, emails went by horse and WhatsApp went by foot. <laughs> Anyway, the king got his messengers to go to every village, every marketplace, every place they had people that he could find. And he invited them to come celebrate Passover in Jerusalem. The messengers would go to these populated places, blow a loud trumpet to get the attention of everyone, of everyone then read the message that the king had sent. The time for the Passover had already passed. But the king decided to still have the celebration just to commemorate the return of church services and to honor God. Initially, it was supposed to be a week long celebration. But at the end of the first week, everyone was having such a great time that they extended it to two weeks. The king and many of the high officials donated thousands of animals for sacrifices, as well as for food to keep the party going for 14 days. What a great time they all had getting to know God again. 
remembering the great things that he had done for them in the past. And now that they had become reacquainted, the promise of what he could do for them in the future. Now, boys and girls, do you know that God has given us an invitation of weekly celebration with him? Yes. He says we are not to do any work on that, that we are to spend that time remembering the great things that he has done for us. Just like the Israelites, we can have special food and drinks on that day, but the best part of the celebration will always be spending time with him. This weekly celebration, called Sabbath, is the method that God commanded us to use to remember that he loves us and that he has done great things for us in the past. However, he has saved the best for last. This weekly celebration is to remind us that he's coming back to this day to take us to the place he has gone to prepare for us, where every day will be a great party, just like the one in Hezekiah had for the children of Israel. I don't want to miss that. Do you? Well, boys and girls, that's our lesson for this week. Keep studying your lesson so that we can talk about it in next week's part. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. This Sabbath story is called Last Invitation. Sehi moved with her family to the countryside after living in a big city in South Korea. Mother was excited about the move. Moving here was an answer to prayer, she said. But Sehi wasn't so sure about that. She felt sad that she had to leave her friends in the city. In the countryside, Sehi began to learn new things. Mother planted a vegetable garden and Sehi and her younger brother took care of the lettuce, cucumbers and corn. Sehi made sure that the vegetables got enough water. She picked weeds so the vegetables would have plenty of room to grow. Before Sehi knew it, the garden was filled with long dark green cucumbers, round heads of light green lettuce and green ears boosting with yellow corn. Sehi loved to eat fresh vegetables picked straight from the garden. I do too. Mother said the neighbors also might like to eat fresh vegetables picked straight from the garden. Sehi helped pick long dark green cucumbers, round heads of light green lettuce, and green ears boosting with yellow corn to give away. The neighbors were so happy to receive the vegetables. Sehi felt good all over as the neighbors smiled and thanked her. Neighbors even gave her gifts of homemade bread and pickled vegetables. Sometimes she returned home with more food than when she left. The Bible teaches that the more you share, the more you receive. Proverbs 11.24 says, Those who give generously receive more. But Sehi didn't have any young friends at church. She and her brother were the only children there. Mother saw Sehi's sad eyes and suggested that she pray for her school classmates and invite them to vacation Bible school at the church. Sehi wrote special invitations for her classmates, but she was shy about giving the invitations to her friends. What if they didn't come? Don't worry, Mother said. It is not your job to persuade them to come to the vacation Bible school. That's God's job. Sehi and Mother handed out the invitations to her classmates. Not one of them came to the vacation Bible school. But one of the boys came to church on Sabbath. The boy lived with his grandparents and didn't know anything about Jesus. He didn't have any friends at school. He was so happy to learn about Jesus at church and he immediately announced that he wanted to come every Sabbath. At home, Mother told Sehi that even though no one had come to the vacation Bible school, God had blessed the invitations by bringing the boy to church. 
We received the very last invitation that we passed out, Mother said. Sahi was amazed. He wouldn't have met Jesus if we hadn't shared the invitations, she said. That night, she prayed a special prayer for the boy. Dear God, thank you for leading him to church, she said. Please let him and his family know and trust you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That is the end of the story. Do have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath and welcome again to another craft time. This morning we'll be drawing a turtle. You will need a white sheet of paper, a pencil, a marker, and some crayons. Let's go! Okay, boys and girls, so in keeping with our theme, under the sea, we want to do a turtle. Now, we're drawing it and coloring it with crayons, so the first thing you want to have is a pencil, and then, of course, have a black marker at the side because you're going to draw first and then trace it over with our pencil. So, the first step to doing our turtle is to draw the shell. And the shell is like an upside down U, or it, it, it's even like a rainbow curve. All right, so follow me first. All right, and then you want to join the two ends. These two ends, you want to join them. Now on this side, you want to make a C. And on the other side, you want to make the belly of a B or a back to front C. And then you want to join them as well. So this represents the shell. But there's a pattern on the shell. So we want to do something similar to a U just with shorter, shorter extensions, a half of a circle. All right, then we're going to come down, draw a line to the middle. And now from between these two lines, you want to draw another line, but it's going to be curved. And then on this side, it is going to be curved. Now, we want to do the head of our turtle. So we come in here and we're just gonna draw a line going up. We want to then do like, as if you're going to draw a circle, but it's just gonna be like a big C. Like that. See a big C. Then we want to make the eye. So we do a big circle. And then we do a little circle. Now we want to finish the neck of our turtle. So we're going to come from here, we're going to come down and then make a curve into our shell like that. So now we want to move on to the feet for our turtle. Uh, we want to start by making um, an upside down U. All right. Then we're going to join the two ends at the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Right? So just remember when you're doing it upside down U, the top of the, or the bottom of the U, the top of the U should be touching the shell. All right? And then once again, you connect the two bottom parts like that. And now we want to do the toes. And the toes, you're doing the toes as if you're doing the letter M. So you're gonna make one bump and two bump. And then do the same thing on the other side. One bump and two bump. These are the toes for your, your feet, right? Now, we want to do another part of the 
the other side of the feet because a turtle has four feet, right? So you're going to come down like that and then you just go across like this as if you're making an L. And then you do one bump this time. Right? And you're coming on this side now and you're doing the same thing. Come down and then as if you're making an L and then you do one bump. All right, we want to do the tail for our turtle. So I'm a left hander, so I'm just going to, just so you can see, right? So on the tail, tail is at the back. We're going to make a curve going up. And then we're going to come around like this. So that's our tail there. Right? Now, we want to draw the belly for our turtle. So you come in like this. All right? And then you join in the leg and the neck. And then you're joining the tail and the belly. We want to put some character or some details into our shell. So in this part, we're going to do some curvy lines so you space it. Go next direction now. Nice. And now we want to do some straight lines to represent the stripes on the belly because our turtle has character, right? I'm gonna put one here as well, and then we're gonna put two here. Nice. This. And if you want, if you want, you could do another line here, right? Um, for the turtle shell. You could do another line coming across here, but it has to be curved, all right? And that's it. Now, we're going to take our marker and we're going to trace our turtle now. Now we're gonna color. And now we want a line in our part of the shell, just like this. You can color over the black. It will, nothing will happen. So you're just lining the inner part of the shell. On both sides. Now we want to take our light green and we're going to just color the inside of our toes and the inner parts that we left out for our turtle shell. But you know something? I want you to be creative. So you know what? Let's use some other colors. If you want to put your turtle shell in pink, in blue, in brown, in orange, you go right ahead.
So there we have it, boys and girls, our turtle. And what can we learn from the turtle? Well, the turtle has a shell that gives it protection. But its shell is not separate from its body. Its shell is, uh, is actually attached to its body. So it means that if you try to take that turtle head and feet and tail away from the shell, the turtle will die. And do you know that God is our protection just like the shell on the turtle, both spiritually and physically? And if it is, we detach ourselves from Christ, then we can also spiritually die. So stay attached to Jesus. Bye. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls! Today's Nature Nugget is about a type of bird that actually bathes in dust. Doesn't sound too smart, right? But there is a good lesson that we can learn from the quail. Quails live in tall grasses and brushy borders of plains and farmlands. They are usually brown, probably from all those dirt baths, speckled with white, black, or chestnut. Their color is supposed to camouflage them from predators. Quails eat mostly seeds, insects, and other small animals that usually eat crops, so they are quite up for the farmers. The quail is actually not a strong flying bird. They spend most of their lives on the ground, running and zigzagging through the grass. However, it can fly a short distances if necessary. The female quail is actually bigger and stronger than the male quail. She does the nest building. Guess where she built her nest? Yeah, you guessed it, in the dirt, in a shallow hole in the ground. They really love dirt, it seems. Quails seem like insignificant animals, but in Exodus 16, God used quails as a food for the many Israelites when they were in the wilderness. Remember, all that time they spend in the dirt? Well, that made it easy for the Israelites to catch them. Sometimes you feel insignificant because you are just a child. But just like the quail, God can use you to help others. In God's timing, the quail came to provide for the needs of his people. And in God's timing, God will use you too. That's it for today's Nature Nugget. Bye! Good morning, boys and girls. This is Auntie Leticia coming to you with another story. And the name of our story this morning is The Captive Maid. What is it called? The Captive Maid. I am that little maid. And I was brought from, the land, from my land to the land of Syria to serve with my master Naaman and to serve his wife. As you can see, I am in bonds. And I was, I was serving a goodly and valiant man and a rich man called Naaman. Naaman, come into the picture. But there was one thing about Naaman. Naaman had leprosy. As you can see, you see all the sores about him. He was scratching. He was itching. Oh, Naaman was miserable. What could Naaman do? One day, the little maid, I, I the little maid, told my, my, ser, my master's servant that he should go to Elijah. And when he saw Elijah, he should say what was going on with him, that he had leprosy, and see if Elisha could heal him. And so Elisha went, um, Naaman went to Elisha. And Elisha told him 
dip seven times go to this river and dip seven times and this is what Naaman said seven times so out of all the rivers why you send me in this river with this dirty water oh. is there not a better river that I could go to oh. and Naaman's servant came to him and told him master if someone told you go into a nice river wouldn't you have gone into a nice river the man of God told you to go into this river, go and wash and be healed, Master. Oh. And so Naaman thought about it. And he decided to go into this river. And boys and girls, we have a song for you. <laughs> there was a man I know. He was a leopard white as snow. He went to the river to wash his sins away. And his name was name sing boys and girls and he did one dip and he did two dips and he did p d p d p d p one two three four five six seven and he came up clean oh what's your face there man what's your <laughs> face no show that show that show show that show that What's the face again, Naaman? Mm. Oh, and Naaman came wow. up clean. Mm. Look at his skin, boys and girls. Yes. Mm. Look at his skin, boys and girls. Isn't it clean? Yes. Isn't it clean? He oh. came up just as how you were when you came out of your what mother's as a baby. Mm. His skin was smooth. Yes. Ah, boys and girls. What if the, uh, the, the little maid didn't tell Elisha, um, Naaman, to go to Elisha? What would have happened to Naaman? What if the, the, what if the little maid didn't love her master so much? Boys and girls, wherever you are, wherever God places you, you can be very true and valiant for him. You just you just trust him. It doesn't matter how old you are. The little man may have been about five or six, or she could have been about 10 or 11 or 12, 13, 14. It doesn't matter how old you are. Wherever God places you, you do the right thing for Jesus. All right, boys and girls? And Auntie Letitia will catch you another time. Bye-bye.